uh, once again, welcome everyone to the blockchain developer series. The second session, which is on Hyperledger Fabric Fundamentals by Logeshwaran Otikeshwan, who is a solutions architect at Suvik Group of Companies. Prior to taking up the solutions architect role, uh, Logeshwaran held various roles in the outsourcing and analytics division. His expertise is in different flavors of blockchain, and it is not just restricted to private blockchain. He graduated from SRM University with a master's in engineering, majoring in information and technology. He has been in the blockchain space for the last four years and has built a few real-time projects. He is actively involved in open source projects and giving back to the community through knowledge sharing by organizing meetups. He currently heads a team of blockchain developers in Sharjah and is developing a decentralized Oracle platform on XDC network. He is also building a blockchain with a new consensus algorithm and setting up and also setting up a next generation platform for NFTs. So I'd like to um, invite Logesh Ranautikeshavan to kindly start the session. Hey, you thank you so much, uh, Anjali, for the nice introduction. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, so this is Logesh, I think. I would like to share my screen uh, before yes, please. I start presenting. Let me okay one minute please confirm when you can see my screen yes okay so once again i think you are given a very good introduction so i don't want to spend more time about me uh, because you already covered it uh, so this is quick information about myself like i have my linkedin posted so if you want to connect with me and have any questions, please do post it. I will be able to answer and respond or support. Okay, so I have uh, uh, different flavors of blockchain experience with respect to Fabric, Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, uh, XDC Network and Solana and so on. Uh, as she rightly mentioned, I, I'm willing to contribute to any open source project. I've been doing it for quite some time now. <clears throat> uh, with that, uh, let me get into agenda straight. Uh, so these are the topics which I would like to cover today. Uh, to start with, what is blockchain? Uh, what is DLT? I'm sure most of you would know base about it, but still, uh, I would touch upon a very basic. And uh, we will be talk talking about critical inputs that you should be aware of uh, before you start a blockchain development. Uh, then types of blockchain, uh, introduction to the private blockchain, and why Hyperledger Fabric and uh, at its overview. Finally, I will be sharing you a demo code walkthrough. It's kind of a template, you know, when you want to set up a browser fabric, uh, you can use this template uh, quickly and uh, spin up the blockchain very quickly. Okay, and finally, we'll have a Q&A. If you have any Q&A on the fly, please do post it in the Q&A section. And uh, every uh, 15 minutes, we will respond to your Q&A accordingly. I hope that sounds clear and uh, start. Okay, so before we touch upon blockchain, let's uh, talk about this quick example, right? Uh, uh, supply chain management. Every one of you uh, would know a basic about you about it, right? Because at, at at any point in time, we are we are touching this supply chain management in our life, right? Be in a consumer or be in a, uh, a distribution, uh, you know, owner or be in a manufacturing owner or be in a supplier, etc. But at the end of the day, uh, when you see this closely. Uh, the supply chain management as a traditional system, right? Every one of the stakeholders here, supply is a stakeholder, uh, manufacturing is a stakeholder, distribution center is a stakeholder, and so on. Every stakeholder except the consumer will have their separate uh, applications, right? To manage their inventory, to manage their uh, uh, purchase orders, to manage their purchase pro 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 invoice, and so on. But uh, if you look at very closely, as a consumer, you may not know what happens in this supply chain, in, this, in the chain of you know uh, life cycle, like how the product is being uh, moved from raw material till the customer center, right? You may not know whether your product is genuine unless or until they all have a common inventory, right? So that's a, a major a problem in current supply chain management system. Uh, let's see how we can tackle this in blockchain. Okay, so that we all understand when we're when talking about blockchain and its uh, use and, it, and its uh, benefits, you would be able to map it very easily. If you look at it, uh, <clears throat> we have uh, same stakeholders like uh, logistics, manufacturer, supplier, and then raw material supplier and so on. But all these stakeholders will be in a common network, like a blockchain network. Everyone will have the node set up and they will be able to share the details, right? For example, 
uh, let's say a raw supplier is getting a raw material from uh, you know raw material supply industry uh, they will be adding the inventory like one ton of raw material i have received whereas uh, as soon as supplier is supplying this raw material to manufacturer he will add this transaction in the blockchain as soon as manufacturer manufacturing let's say laptop let's assume the laptop is a product here so he will manufacture let's say uh, 100000 laptops right he will have that in inventory in the, in the record similarly if if manufacturer is going to send this uh, uh, let's part of laptops to a distribution center uh, he will again add this transaction to the record which means every transaction is getting added to the block right at the end of the day uh, when when you purchase the laptop as a consumer uh, when you scan this uh, you know qr code you should be able to know uh, the origin of this product from where it is getting delivered from where it is being manufactured so what are the raw uh, you know material has been added what is the, what is the configuration of the laptop and from where they have procured this you know uh, intel board etc etc which means you know all in one you should be able to gather the information in the blockchain that is how it is disrupting the supply chain i mean to say the blockchain right so let's see why and who created bitcoin uh, we all know right i mean uh, if you are into blockchain i'm sure you would have heard the name called satoshi nakamoto right uh, i mean it's like a pseudo name we, we, we still do not know whether it's a person whether it is a group of people whether it is an enterprise anything but still the pseudo name is satoshi nakamoto uh, he just uh, uh, built this peer to peer electronic cash system way back in 2008 and you all know right i mean uh, there is a disappointment uh, uh, during that 2008 period uh, he, he then he uh, the group realized that uh, there is a need for peer to peer exchange instead of relying on a banking system that is how uh, the bitcoin white paper are formed and uh, they have you know launched it uh, in, in 2009 in 2009 uh, january first a uh, very first transaction has been you know transacted like bitcoin transaction and uh, you know if you look at it the first transaction uh, mined the 50 btc and those 50 btc cannot be used or spent that is how the business logic has been uh, you know uh, configured and uh, if you look at very closely in the transaction inside you know you can see the message right like chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks which shows the disappointment from the the, the origin i mean uh, the, the creator of bitcoin so we just wanted to make sure uh, there is no uh, intermediary uh, when when there is a a uh, cash transaction happen and cash transaction has to happen between peer to peer right that is the reason the bitcoin have evolved and uh, during those period uh, nobody have had a trust on the bitcoin everyone thought that okay it's another uh, if you go back in 1995 or 1990s uh, you know when the internet has uh, reached the uh, world people are thinking it won't work right people were thinking it won't work and uh, they were saying that uh, it will be uh, going burst or dust similarly when bitcoin evolved in 2008 people were raising lot of you know they were raising their hype they were saying it won't work digital currency and so on but now you can see the history right bitcoin have transformed uh, like anything from 2007 to 2008 there have been r&d and 2009 the first transaction 2010 fatf uh, issues the warning about the digital currency to the world and then uh, bitcoin reaches the parity with us dollar 2011 and uh, so on so so on so on. and you know the history now so where do we stand with respect to bitcoin but why i am keep stressing about bitcoin should of blockchain right i am sure most of you uh, would hear this right bitcoin is equal to blockchain i am sure some of you but it is not 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 that not that not like that right so bitcoin is a protocol whereas the blockchain is a platform or, or technology or the or the system which is using the protocol of bitcoin or or the features of the bitcoin protocol right that is how we have to uh, define the blockchain If you look at the blockchain, uh, you know, uh, as abbreviation or uh, definition, a blockchain is a decentralized, distributed, and public digital ledger, right? So every transaction which is happening in this blockchain uh, cannot be altered, or I would say uh, this cannot be hacked as well. We can say loudly when it comes to public uh, blockchain ledger. Now, the reason I'm stressing the public blockchain ledger, the moment we get into a private blockchain blockchain ledger, I will be able to differentiate. a uh, wide public and wide private and uh, uh, what are the benefits in public and what are the benefits uh, in uh, private and so on so right so if you look at it <clears throat> when someone wanted to uh, make an update or make an edit into the transaction uh, in the blockchain 
uh, he or she, I mean, the hackers has to sub, uh, make all the updates with respect to subsequent block, which is impractical, which cannot be done at any point in time. That's why blockchain is, uh, uh, blockchain technology is evolving like anything. If you closely watch about the blockchain hash, uh, this is how the block, every block will be linked together, right? So for example, the block one header will have the hash of previous block and it will have a Merkle tree of all the transaction which are embedded to the block. Similarly, this block header, block hash will be tagged with another block and so on and so on. Let's say if I want to, if, I, if I'm a hacker, I want to hack this specific block with my own set of data, obviously the hash value, hash value will be changed here right this hash value will be changed here which will be which will not be matched up with block three which means entire blockchain will be you know broken so that's how uh you know the bit the block blockchain has been configured and the merkle tree has been uh, introduced in the ashing mechanism what is merkle tree if you look at this every transactions will be ashed in blockchain right every transaction will be uh, securely uh, digitally signed cryptographically encrypted it will create a hash right for example if transaction a uh, will have a hash of a similarly transaction b will have an hash of b and so on so on so these uh, these hash together will form another hash and these two hash together will form another hash like which a merkle tree will be formed let's say if someone wanted to introduce <coughs> erroneous data or some some data wanted to be modified then they will come here they will change it but as soon as they change this uh, hash hash value of uh, you know uh, this transaction obviously this hash will get changed if this hash get changed then this will get changed and this entire tree will be invalid right which means uh, this is practically not possible uh, to hack entire block in a blockchain even if a hacker were able to do so that specific node will be considered as compromised right and it will be removed from the blockchain uh, network Let's talk about blockchain history. Uh, see, we all know that uh, blockchain uh, is there for last, maybe um, uh, last seven years it is uh, evolving like anything. Everyone talking about blockchain, they wanted to uh, adapt the blockchain technology in their, uh, in, their, in, their, in their business. But if you if you look back, you know, even if you go back 1000 BC, uh, the, there's an example called like, you know, there's an app island. In this app island, uh, uh, if there is a unique form of currency. This currency is like a stone, right? This stone would be uh, 12 uh, feet tall and then 8,000 LBS, you know, weight. So this stone cannot literally, literally cannot be uh, moved. So, but the ownership of the stone will be with the respective, you know, uh, person who is uh, you know, taking care of it. But how uh, this ownership will be known to entire village? They used to, you know, share this information. This stone belongs to me. So like which the information will be uh, shared with the respective uh, people in the villages. They will record the information. Okay, this stone belongs to this person and this stone belongs to this person. If this person wanted to, you know, transact this stone to somebody else, he just need to call the person who is in charge of the village and have to convey the message. I want to, you know, uh, transfer the ownership of this stone to this person. So as soon as it does, you know, they will be uh, distributed or it is, uh, you know, uh, uh, message will be cascaded to entire village saying that this stone belongs to now person B. So if you look at this closely, this uh, specific concept, this is how the blockchain works, right? As soon as a transaction is happening in the blockchain network, it will be gossiped to the entire uh, node in the blockchain. So this will be again verified uh, against the data, what is already available in the blockchain, and then the transaction will be allowed to commit in the blockchain ledger. Right? That's a quick example which you can map it with a real-time real-time, you know. Uh, story let's talk about accounting accounting is uh, again we have to go back 5000 bc but 300 bc uh, chanakya uh, who first documented uh, accounting standards and then uh, we had a double entry ledger uh, and finally we have now blockchain which is triple entry ledger right we have third copy of data uh, which ensures the auditing and uh, you know the logging everything is captured nicely Let's talk about the benefits of blockchain. Uh, blockchain is publicly verifiable. Of course, uh, since we are going to talk about private blockchain, uh, let's. Uh, this benefit is mostly uh, uh, belongs to public blockchain. It's publicly verifiable and more secure. Like as I mentioned earlier, every transaction in the blockchain is uh, you know uh, securely encrypted, right? Digitally signed, and uh, 
encrypted and it is very secure quality assurance since data is uh, uh, non hackable the quality audit we can assure that and lower transaction cost of course uh, when it comes to uh, public blockchain like ethereum uh, we have high gas fee but still many blockchains is now evolved and they are giving low transaction cost and most importantly tokenization uh, when you have an when you have an idea when you want to implement in blockchain you can easily tokenize it and you can start you know uh, selling a part of your uh, shares uh, to the like a fractional uh, assets can be distributed via tokenization and most importantly this is tradable let's talk about drawback of course every technology has its own drawback right uh, but but this drawback is going to be quite challenging for example blockchain is constantly changing so every uh, you know a day we are seeing new uh, new protocol is being introduced new algorithm is being introduced and uh, people are trying to adapt people are making sure that this blockchain is getting fine tuned so that it can uh, match with the legacy uh, system where it with respect to throughput or with respect to performance right and another thing is since blockchain is quite new like last 5 years the best practices the recommended patterns are still being formed right we do not have a proper documentation for some blockchain and uh, of course every community members are contributing towards to it but uh, this is the one of the drawback we are considering another thing like scalability scalability and transaction speed is a major drawback in blockchain and some of the blockchain is trying to you know eradicate it uh, by by bringing up some new protocol altogether but this is one of the major concern with respect to the blockchain and uh, most important uh, chart which i would like to uh, highlight here so see i mean it is not that blockchain is uh, you should be taking it for granted like you should not be taking blockchain for all the use cases we should be asking a lot many questions before we take a step before implementing any blockchain please ask yourself all this question then you should be able to you know when you are able to reach this point or this this point then you are good to you know uh, uh, develop your use cases into blockchain else do not do because many use cases are uh, uh, available as an example where you know uh, enterprises are trying to adapt blockchain just for a sake but they fail to see the uh, you know roi or i would say the real benefits of the blockchain right for example if you want to uh, remove the intermediaries or brokers then you know if, you have, if your answer is no then do not use blockchain if yes then go to next question are you working with digital assets if your question is no then do not use blockchain if yes then go to next question like which you can ask sequential of question and finally if you if you have an answer for yes yes for all the question most of your question then go and use your blockchain of course that should be the suitable use cases to implement blockchain right there are so many use cases which we can keep talking but i just wanted to highlight uh, some of it here for example uh, energy trading uh, land registration is one of the beautiful example in blockchain and uh, waste management another thing is uh, nft you know fine heart collections and uh, you know <clears throat> taxation is there insurance part is there for example flight insurance you can take a very good example let's say if a flight is delayed for some time then insurance will be automatically debited to your account uh, if not you know it, it is void similarly the music uh, music industry is uh, implementing blockchain like anything for example if you wanted to uh, buy a music uh, album you can listen a uh, part of it and if you like it then buy it else you don't need to buy it so to listen that part of uh, music you have to pay a small penny right small token so like which we can uh, we have so many use cases which is being disrupted by blockchain uh, technology right uh, let's talk about diamonds so diamond like a origin of diamonds uh, from where it has been cut and how it has been uh, transmitted and who is the distributor who is the seller so on and so on so you will be having a complete chain of custody right so we can keep talking uh, another uh, best example i can uh, quote as fishing like a uh, tuna fish that's one of the best example which is available in hypergeal fabric itself how tuna fish is being you know uh, taken from the sea and then uh, right to the uh, table how it is being uh, uh, transferred how it is being transmitted how it is being transported everything is getting captured by using iot as well of course iot is part of part and part of blockchain as well of blockchain because without iot if you if you are going to introduce any uh, you know uh, data aggregation use cases it won't work right that's another piece which i want to highlight here types of blockchain uh, if you look at closely we have three types majorly 
public blockchain, private blockchain, and consortium. Public blockchain, uh, as we all know, we have so many examples like Ethereum, we have Solana, we have uh, uh, XDC network, we have so many use cases, so many blockchains available as a public, which means anyone, even, even you can go and participate in the network, right? You can, if you have a wallet, which is compatible with the respective blockchain, you can install it in the Chrome browser or you can insert in the in your mobile app and then you can start transacting, right? Anyone can communicate, anyone can, you know, participate in reading or writing or auditing the blockchain, which is open to anyone. But only thing is, uh, it will have a ballot information. It won't have any uh, personally identifiable information, PAA data. It will have only valid information like anonymous data. You can see what data has been transmitted from one wallet to other wallet. That's it. But still, you can view entire blockchain data. That's public blockchain. Uh, private blockchain, that's what we are going to see. It's private uh, property. Of course, a group of organization can set up the private blockchain so that they can do all those kind of transactions within themselves. And here there will be one, one person who will be in charge of it, right? They will be a super org. He will be taking care of the entire thing, like uh, approving the chain code or sorry, committing the chain code, etc. Uh, like adding another organization in the network and so on. Here, only the respective, uh, you know, I mean, authorized person will be able to do auditing and so on in private blockchain, right? Again, no identity person will be able to do the transaction, not the unknown group. That's a private blockchain. Consortium blockchain is a bit different from private blockchain, I, but close to it. If you look at it, uh, here, instead of one in, in charge, we will have more than one in, in charge. For example, group of bank, let's say, you know, at, uh, RBL bank or ICICA or HDFC or many other banks, they say they all form a consortium and they want to form a big network, right? Here, each bank will have some kind of authorization and they will make sure uh, to do certain access level control, right? That's how the consortium comes into picture. If you look at this very closely, this chart will give you, uh, give you a quick example. Uh, in public blockchain, anyone can run a full node, but in private blockchain, uh, not anyone can do, everyone cannot do, right? But in consortium, only certain members of the consortium can run a full node, right? In public, anyone can make transaction. In private, only uh, known identity uh, can make transaction, right? And in consortium, selected members should be able to do it. Uh, in public, anyone can audit. Uh, private, only authorized person can audit. Similarly, consortium, selected group of people can do the audit. A quick information about access level. But for example, in public, permissionless, uh, you know, anyone can read or write. In private, like same thing. Network actors, uh, here we may not know each other. Anyone can participate. I may not know your wallet, you may not know mine, but still we can do part, uh, you know, transact. But in private, everyone is known to each other. So in public, we will have a native currency, like for example, Ethereum, Ether, uh, we have Solana, SOL for Solana and so on. But in private, uh, native currency is not required. Uh, in public security, of course, we have a lot of many consensus algorithm, which is uh, very famous, proof of work, proof of stake, proof of space, etc. But in private, mostly a smart contract, and draft algorithm and so on, proof of authority. Uh, speed, uh, public blockchain very slow, but in private blockchain, we can uh, increase the performance based on the infra, right? Examples of public, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Monero, Zcash, etc. In private, we have R3, EWF, B3I, Hyperledger Fabric and so on. Let's talk about quickly private blockchain and then we'll jump on to actual Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, so permission blockchain provides a way to securely interact, uh, you know, between group of entity. If you look at these two, you know, uh, uh, picture, it shows that a coordinated attack leading to victory, right? Everyone, if they are attacking at the same time, they can win this. But in uncoordinated attack, for example, if this, if these uh, red people are attacking the, you know, fort, but other other are not, like they are traitor, they it may lead to defeat, right? This, this is what we call it as uh, Byzantine fault tolerance algorithm, right? BFT, Byzantine general problem algorithm. That is how uh, to solve that we have something called Byzantine fault tolerance consensus algorithm. Right? In Nipolizer fabric, we mostly use PBFT, right? PBFT. We'll, we'll see this. We will see that in uh, shortly. So before you, you know, uh, develop any blockchain uh, in enterprise you need to have these three things very, you know, uh, you need to give high importance to these three things. 
like confidentiality, uh, like uh, only authorized person should see the data or should uh, view the data, privacy uh, between two organizations, they should have a data, you know, privately sharing with each other, even if they're in the same network, scalability and performance. So you, your, your throughput should be good. And uh, when you wanted to add a new organization, new members, new peers, you should be able to do that very easily, right? That's another thing which you have to consider before you develop any enterprise system. Okay, so I think I spoke more. Let me see if there are any questions in Q&A. Fine, there is none. I'll jump on to next topic. So in this topic, we'll cover uh, quickly on Appledger introduction, why Appledger, Appledger family overview and so on. Okay, so and then we'll have a, we'll have a Q&A. So every, we have almost four quarter. So every quarter we'll have a Q&A and uh, I'll jump on to another quarter again. So Hyperledger is an open source community and uh, it is being uh, uh, you know, led by our Linux foundation. And we all know Linux almost for three decades, I would say in my, in my, in my view, they are very famous in nature and they always support open source projects, right? And they are back, this oh, Hyperledger fabric is backed by leading technology companies such as you know IBM, SAP, etc. And uh, Fabric has very big community worldwide. If you look at the contribution from you know developers, you can see so many meetups are being organized. So many meetups has so many members who are act actually participating uh, in a meetup group, especially in India, and of course now in Sarja, uh, which I am heading. But uh, in my knowledge, uh, I mean, my knowledge, there are many meetups which is being organized by uh, Hyperledger Fabric community. Uh, this one is modular in design. For example, if you if you want to write your own consensus algorithm, if you want to plug it here, yes, you can do that. And if you want to remove a certain pieces, and if you want, let's say, if you want to remove CouchDB database, and instead of CouchDB, if you want to uh, add another database, you can do that. So everything is modular in approach. It is very easy to plug and play, right? And most importantly, it is permissioned DLT, okay? It is permission. Only authorized person will be allowed to enter and then make a transaction. A quick bites. The blockchain technology has managed and distributed more than two seventy billion dollar in transaction till now. It's it's you know commonly a huge value. Like both public and private blockchain together, uh, they have done the transaction as per the statistics. Let's quickly touch upon Hyperledger family overview. We have so many products uh, getting developed in Hyperledger uh, family. To start with, uh, let's see Hyperledger Besu. We have Hyperledger Besu. Uh, this is basically a, a product which helps you to link Ethereum uh, with Hyperledger, Hyperledger, right? You can handle, you can deal, you can talk to Hyperledger, uh, sorry, Ethereum client using Hyperledger Besu. You can be able to transact with uh, all the available network like Rinkeby, uh, Robston, Coven, etc. Hyperledger Fabric, which we are going to deal now, uh, deal with now. This is the most popular uh, product in Hyperledger family overall. Right, most of the use cases are being developed in Hyperledger Fabric. Hyperledger Indy and Hyperledger Aries, these two work together, right? So these two are for uh, digital, I mean, uh, decentralized identity (DID) development purpose. We they'll be using Hyperledger Indy and Hyperledger Aries. Right, Hyperledger Sawtooth is kind of uh, you know uh, mostly initially it's, it supported uh, Sawtooth, sorry, supply chain, and now it is supporting uh, supporting all of these cases as well. But now for uh, supply chain, we have a separate uh, you know uh, product in place called Hyperledger Grid. So mostly for supply chain, you can start using Hyperledger Grid now, and we have Hyperledger Bevel, which is coming up. The, all these tools are incubating, incubating level. Uh, Hyperledger team wanted to uh, increase the adoption rate uh, for the Hyperledger, so they are introducing Hyperledger Bevel. So when it is available, you know what will happen? Uh, anyone can spin the Hyperledger fabric use cases very quickly, right? And we have Hyperledger uh, Caliper. If you want to uh, measure your performance, Hyperledger fabric performance, you can use Hyperledger Caliper. Hyperledger Stellar is for you know uh, testing, automation, and so on and uh, so on so we have so many tools which are getting uh, developed all together you can see these are in incubating status incubating right but these are graduated okay let's talk about fabric now so fabric as i said here it's open source and of course it's a permission dlt 
uh, fabric as highly modular and uh, configurable architecture and uh, one of the best feature about fabric is uh, fabric supports a common or general purpose programming language which we are using for last a, a decade or so right java or node.js and even go language even in python you can write your own smart contract so if you are if you are a, one of the programmer in these languages uh, you know you can start writing the smart contract immediately in iPlayer fabric and another thing is it supports a pluggable consensus as i said earlier if you want to write your own own consensus protocol you can do that and easily you can plug it in the Appalachian fabric right and then uh, here fabric doesn't require native currency so in like uh, otherwise in public blockchain you, you should have a native currency to do the transaction but in private blockchain there is no native cryptocurrency involved there is no mining involved okay let's talk about the functionality so we will be discussing about identity management privacy a confidentiality a chain code a modular design efficient processing and permission identity management uh, you know if uh, as i said earlier uh, in ipleger fabric if you want to transact you should have a ballot you should have an identity right you should have identity to create this identity we have something called fabric ca sdk right so ca certificate authority will help you to develop or, or generate a necessary identity using which as a user you should be able to participate in respective organization right and privacy let's say uh, uh, let's take an example we all know whatsapp right uh, in whatsapp there will be a lot of members right and there will be one admin maybe you can make, you can make another person as an admin as well if all of you are chatting in the whatsapp the message will be shown to everyone like everyone will see each other let's say if you want to uh, send send the message in the group but in encrypted fashion which can be decrypted by only the respective recipient like say friend one which means the private data is being shared in the common channel so here assume that the whatsapp is a channel okay through which all of the members in the specific whatsapp group is communicating with each other if you want to create another channel you can do so you can create another whatsapp group but again adding more whatsapp group in a whatsapp will you know will create a lot of administrative efforts you cannot ask you cannot have n number of uh, whatsapp group right in such case you can share encrypted data to the respective recipient so that he can only decrypt and view the data that is what we call it as private private data right that can be achieved that's what privacy here and confidentiality of course only authorized person should be able to view the data only those person will be allowed to enter into the network chain code in block in public blockchain we have something called smart contract right so example in ethereum uh, they use already to write a smart contract and in solana they use rust language to write smart contract and so on but in uh, iperger fabric uh, we have something called chain code this chain code can be written in either golang or node.js or in java and so on so basically all the business rule engine uh, can be uh, developed using chain code uh, the chain code concept then we have modular design of course as i said uh, this is modular and not design enough like uh, you can plug and play as and when required uh, efficient processing which majorly talks about a uh, transaction per second so you know in using aperture fabric in your traditional um, mac laptop or your traditional 16 gb ram you should be able to achieve a good throughput right for example if you have a good uh, network in place a good infra in place you should be able to achieve a huge transaction per second another thing is permission of course it is a permission uh, blockchain key concept to understand uh, so cryptography in uh, fabric uh, we are using sha256 for digital signature ripe md160 algorithm for the algorithm for hashing address and encrypted you know curve is used for generation of keys right and smart contract we have uh, smart contract mostly we use this uh, terminology in fabric so nothing but a chain code right uh, in public blockchain ethereum plays a key role since it's smart contract has a lot of capability but in hyperledger we have chain code of course it's again a smart contract so in uh, private blockchain we have transaction so transaction as soon as submitted by the client it goes to you know uh, unconfirmed transaction or transaction pool right so transaction is stored in the block in chronological order and so on so 
in the block every transaction is ordered in a chronological way right and then finally the blocks will be generated so the blocks nothing but the transaction data is permanently recorded in files called blocks so in this summary in this uh, quick quarter one uh, session uh, what we have gone through appalager intro and then appalager family overview and few key concept in appalager so let me take few questions okay i think my voice is not that clear can, can you hear me now yes no yes yes we can hear you perfect okay someone is asking guided path to be a blockchain developer so there are two things if you want to be a blockchain developer you first ask uh, uh, do you want to develop uh, do you want to be a part of public blockchain or do you want to be part of private blockchain if you want to be a uh, public blockchain developer uh, there are not many uh, you know uh, um, documentations are available in the platform for example let's say uh, you want to be a ethereum uh, developer i would recommend you to start learning solidity right so before you start learning solidity you should know basic about javascript so start with the javascript first and then uh, slightly touch upon html bootstrap because you, you cannot always go and tell them you know you are a solidity developer go as a full stack developer tell them i know java i know, sorry i know solidity and i know javascript i can write the api so that i can uh, bring the data from smart contract i can push the data to the smart contract and so on so i would recommend if you want to be a blockchain developer ask this question whether i want to be public blockchain if yes i would recommend go with hard hat tutorial uh, read and learn solidity practice it uh, maybe you can check solidity by example.com or learnweb3.com there are so many uh, nice uh, tutorials there are so many nice uh, you know repository available in place so check it out but of course uh, you know, being in blockchain field is very simple. I would say the learning curve is a bit steep, but if you have a, a continuous practice and if you keep practicing, I'm sure you can drop it. We just have say, one more. Yeah. Uh, we have one more question on the chat. I'll just read it out. Um, How is gas and gas price managed in private network? Who validates the transaction and is there incentive for the validator? Perfect. So in private blockchain, there is no gas involved, first thing. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, here, uh, there is something called a con you know, raft consensus or PBFT consensus algorithm, which means, uh, see, gas required only when there is unknown identity, when only when there is unknown you know, a node in a place, right? For example, in public blockchain, what happens? When you submit a transaction, the transaction has to be mined, right? The miner has to get some reward uh, for performing some complex calculation for, you know, uh, for, for, uh, for solving that complex puzzle, like proof of work. To do that, the transaction fee has to be sent to the miner as a reward. That is why the gas is involved in public blockchain because unknown person is doing mining on behalf of us, but in private blockchain, every actors are known to each other. For example, uh, entity A, entity B, entity C, these three entities are forming a network and uh, they all know who is going to be participating in the network. They will allow their employees to be part of the application, right? And all those employees will have the role level access, which means your, uh, your business rule, your smart contract will have the rule, you know, rule engine saying that if the specific transaction is submitted by, let's say, a manager, then perform this transaction. Like there will be endorsement policy. There are a lot many rules, but everything will take care of the transaction mining and then transaction, you know, uh, approving and then uh, adding into the block. Any other questions? No, that's all, that's all for now. Uh, okay, okay. So actually, just uh, okay. So just one more. Um, so the send uh, T. Okay, I think you should read it. Uh, could you check the chat, please? Oh, okay, okay. Just one minute. Uh, yeah. So the send transaction data structure does not have these fields. So send transaction. You mean to say uh, in the private blockchain, um, Manjuri Grajza.
okay so let him come back i'll try to come back so i will just keep moving by the time if he i mean if he uh, answer my questions i will respond back again. perfect can you hear me lokesh uh, yep yeah so i was asking that uh, in ethereum uh, private network if i want to build then uh, the, i have to create a transaction right in the transaction we are talking about ethereum got it got it see yeah. in ethereum you can set up the private uh, blockchain but all those gas will be marked mock data you still have to yeah. send the transaction gas fee in ethereum i'm saying yeah right everything will be uh, marked nothing uh, as a real ether nothing as a real gas fee you are not going to spend any money you can yeah. mint n number of ether token over there yeah can you highlight about the difference of like ethereum and hyperledger so Obviously. that idea, see ethereum like, structure is absolutely see in ethereum uh, let's say uh if you take ethereum as a example there are two things when multiple nodes are being even you can now uh, download ethereum blockchain and sync it up with the mainnet right that's one thing uh, when you are syncing up with the mainnet which means you are exposing your url to the public so anyone i mean whoever is the, doing the transaction will come and store it in your laptop if your laptop is exposed to the public let's say if you want to set up a private blockchain using ethereum you will not expose your network and uh, you can also set up the mock gas fee and uh, mock ether right which means all the data which will be stored in your laptop in your machine if you are setting up in your own laptop or let's say if you are going to set up this in uh, aws or in a uh, google as google uh, gcp or azure respective server will hold host the data right you will have a you will have a complete control on your data but the point here is uh, the private blockchain using ethereum will do all those complex mining and all but it it will be much 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 faster in fraction of second because everything is uh, done uh, by a mock right uh, like uh, simulations not a real transactions but in hyperledger fabric there is no currency involved there is no cryptocurrency involved only thing is there will be lot many components will be interacting with each other for example orders there will be peers there will be organization organization there will be peers and there will be cas there will be couch db and so on so so these components will work together it will make sure as soon as the transaction is received by the client it will check whether the transaction is uh, properly i mean uh, sent by authorized person whether this transaction is valid whether the identity is valid and so on and then so i will just explain this while i go through this presentation because i have a transaction flow in my presentation okay a quick bites uh, from famous person so blockchain could change our world more than people imagine like bitcoin however could be a bubble right the famous word I, this might inspire you let's talk about a uh, shared ledger and uh, privacy consensus and smart contract and ledger fabric so so in ledger we have something called you know two things like a like world state and then transaction log world state is nothing but it's a, it's a component uh basically you know uh all your queries or your transaction will happen in this ledger in this world state whereas transaction log components record all the transaction which have resulted in current value of the world state for example the moment you submit the transaction you know it gets stored in the transaction log but the data gets stored in the world state right uh, all your real time all your current value uh, for example if you want to uh, read what is the current balance of this wallet the current balance will be read from uh, world state right but the transaction will be in the transaction log you need to understand these differences and we have something called smart contract which we have already seen enough chain code in privacy uh, privacy can be attained using channels but more channels if you set up in your network it will have uh, over administrative administrative you know uh, work so try to avoid more channels adding into the network instead of that start using private data right and consensus we have practical byzantine fault tolerance alg consensus algorithm being used here and if you want to change your own algorithm you are welcome to do so quick bites uh, almost 15.9 billion worldwide spending on blockchain solution wow. is expected to grow from 1.5 billion to an estimated of 15.5 billion so in 2023 we are expected 15.5 billion 
you know spending will be on blockchain technology okay so let's see what are the prerequisites when you want to uh, learn hyperledger fabric uh, don't you know worry about all this uh, stuff but these are the basic things which are required for your environment to be ready to accept the hyperledger fabric execution right for example docker so docker you will be mostly dealing with the docker images image and you know, docker containers so you need docker and golang uh, if you are if you are writing your smart contract in javascript of course it is not required but still go is mandatory go you need to use for some other library and node js you know this is again optional if you want to write a rest api using node js you have to use ndm for uh, managing your node version fabric binaries you will be installing it uh, try to use ubuntu 18.04 and above of course mac will also support better uh, windows mostly you will end up facing some issues because it is not that friendly compared to uh, ubuntu or mac we have python so some of the libraries will expect python 2.7 to be installed so make sure you have uh, python 2.7 and uh, we have git of course you need to do some git clone uh, zip and unzip for tar file unzipping and uh, uh, zipping uh, try to use your uh, preferable text editor so i would go with visual, visual studio code but anything is fine and the engines is mongo engines and mongo it is optional of course if you want to have a uh, off chain data in your own database uh, prefer go with the couch base as well so these are the basic prerequisite uh, which are required uh, to start your appleser fabric journey okay so here you will see quick architecture how uh, you know a transaction is being submitted how it is getting flown and so on if you look at it appleser application will be submitting the proposal right so through which <clears throat> any authorized user will be submitting a transaction it then uh, this transaction goes to endorsing peer endorsing peer will you know uh, get the proposal and then it will execute the chain code like simulation it will not write any data it will not modify any data it will just simulate the transaction and get back you a read write set this is how the result will be like that once you receive it you know if you see the send proposal send response back to application application will submit the transaction back to transfer you know ordering ordering node so there will be something called orderer node which we will see it shortly so orderer node something like a supervisor right it will it will manage all the incoming up, uh, transaction and uh, to whom it has to be you know tran transferred as soon as the endorsing is done and so on so orderer peer uh, will then uh, send the transaction to committing peer right committing peer finally uh, will write the uh, data into the ledger so there will be something called anchor peer as well right every org will have anchor peer and committing peer anchor peer is nothing but uh, so for example let's say you have uh, in aws you have three machines three ec2 instance right one instance will have uh, one org second will have second org third will have third org so each org will have respective uh, anchor peer and endorsing peer anchor peer is the one will communicate with each other machine let's say ec2 one will talk to ec2 two ec2 to uh, through anchor peer like uh, gossiping the protocol gossiping the transaction to each other and then anchor peer will you know hand over the transaction to committing peer and so on so this is the overall flow uh, which will be you know executing uh, whenever the transaction is submitted by the client client application you look at the transaction flow client initiate the transaction endorsing peers verify signature and execute the transaction this is where the validity or i would say identity will be verified then proposal proposal responses are inspected client assembles the endorsement into transaction then transaction is validated and committed finally ledger is updated these are the binary files uh, which you must know uh, before yes you know most of the files you will be using like config transaction and uh, crypto gen these two will be mostly used as a beginner i mean everyone will have to use it because we have to first generate the conf, uh, crypto files and then uh, we have to generate the genesis block and so on so these two file will help you to do that and we have config translator to read the file let's say if you want to add a new peer in the future into your network you need to read your genesis block you know and then uh, 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 append the word new peer and so on and we have order binary and we have discover binary we have peer binary so most frequently used is a peer binary right this peer binary will help you to uh, package the chain code 
and then uh, approve the chain code and commit the chain code and install the chain code and so on. You can also be able to read the data and write the data using peer. And we have Fabric CA client and Fabric CA server is our uh, Node SDK. Uh, mostly, if you are using a uh, Node for REST API generation, we'll end up using this Fabric CA client, Fabric CA server. Right. So let me see if any questions. Okay, there is none. Thank you. Um, let me move on. Okay, let's quickly discuss about a few other critical components in, uh, in Apache Fabric, like membership service provider, CA, and channels and private data, types of peers and types of order, right? So if you look at it very closely, MSP and CA, mostly people will be confused with each other, right? So certificate authority, it is nothing but this is the one which will issue the identity to the respective you know peer respective organization respective order but the msp is the one who will decide which ca is eligible to issue the identity right membership service provider is responsible for responsible to decide which ca is allowed to issue the identity but ca will be the one actually issue the identity you need to understand these two differences. If you look at this, you know, uh, image, it will help you to understand. For example, all these cards uh, will be issued by a respective CA, right? Whereas here, the MSP decide to accept which one will be accepted, like whether a Visa or Mastercard and so on, right? These are the CA, like different different credit card will be issued by different vendor. Whereas in this, MSP will decide which CAs are eligible, which credit card is allowed here, accepted here, right? So in the iPledger fabric, every actors who is participating in the network should have a digital identity, right? And those identity will be generated by CA. In iPledger fabric, we have something called fabric CA, fabric CA, uh, you know, client which will help you to generate this respective identity. Okay. And uh, if you look at this, so this is how it works. So certificate authority provides number of certificate services to user of a blockchain, right? And we have transaction certificate authority. We have endowment certificate authority. We have TLS certificate authority. So for each of it, respective crypto files, you know, will be generated, respective identity file will be generated. Okay, and uh, quick bites, 55% of healthcare applications will have adopted blockchain for commercial deployment by 2025. It's again stats and the analysis uh, you know, done by some a great team. We have so many healthcare applications also, you know, getting developed, getting built in Apple as a fabric, of course, uh, because the, the medical data is more sensitive, right? More sensitive, we cannot share to everyone. So Apple as a fabric is one of the best uh, uh, platform through which healthcare industries are getting disrupted. Let's talk about channel. As I mentioned earlier, channel is used to, uh, you know, communicate between two or more party in the network, right? Let's say uh, an organization one wanted to talk to organization two, uh, there can be a channel A. If R1, R2, R3 wanted to uh, talk, talk in common, they can create channel B. They can create a number of channel, but when we have more number of channel, then managing this, uh, all the channel will be uh, administrative overhead. That is where the private data will come into picture. So try to restrict the channel, you know, uh, limit, try to have a limit with the channels creation. Instead of that, use private data as much as much possible. Okay. So this is what private data is all about. So private data is nothing but, you know, when transaction is submitted uh, by an application, if it has a private data, even order cannot, re cannot be able to view it. So it will be encrypted, it will be asked, and then start sharing to the data. Like there will be a persistent storage, which will manage the, you know, private data. So private data is very secure uh, and it will be available only to the allowed entity allowed you to read the data to you know view the data others can only see ash of the data 
So we have types of pair, multiple peers, multiple peers, for example, anchor peer, uh, endorser peer, and then committing peer. Endorser peer actually validate the transaction, right? They execute the chain code, for example, simulation. The moment someone submit the transaction, it will first check whether the transaction is valid, whether the transaction, uh, if I execute, what will be the retrade set, all this will be done, then send back the proposal back to client application. Whereas the anchor peer receives the updates from the order. As soon as it receives the update, it broadcasts the updates to other peers in the organization. As I said earlier, uh, each org will have its own anchor peer and this anchor peer will be communicated communicate with each other. And finally, we have a committing peer who actually validates the transaction again and then make sure there is no change with respect to read write set because sometimes you know during the fraction of second the other transaction would have you know would have occurred right so it will always ensure the current world state still matches with the read write set before it uh, committing the transaction into the ledger order node uh, we have different types of order like raft uh, kafka and then solo uh, uh, latest and I would say most frequently used nowadays is raft algorithm raft order like uh, and then solo is only for development purpose right so if you are developing in your own machine and you know you are free to use uh, solo but production strictly no try to use raft <coughs> um, algorithm raft order okay so basically order node transaction orders a transaction it's it it chronologically you know uh, sequence the transaction and then uh, combine into block finally send it back to the you know respective anchor peer so that anchor peer will communicate to the committing peer so in this class in this quarter we just uh, gone through you know uh, msps pks uh, channels and private data uh, peer and order nodes types right uh, any questions before i jump on and show you how to uh, build your first network how to generate the crypto files and so on uh, finally we will we will review our demo code uh, just one question in the chat. I'll just read it out. How is the data stored in order to retrieve the details stored in chain? And uh, will there be a separate database for the application using Fabric? Okay, I'm just looking at now. How the data is stored in order to retrieve the details stored in chain? Can you please explain? Okay, see, uh, if you look at it, in, uh, in, it, this is something like a traditional system only. For example, when you are storing in a legacy system, what happens actually when you write the data? It, the insertion insertion query will trigger and then data gets stored in the block uh, database right be it sql uh, or be it uh, uh, some other databases oracle databases whereas in blockchain the same thing happens but only thing is here instead of uh, sql we'll have a no sql database like couch couch db right and we have also level db so in average fabric it, it supports both the level db and the couch db default is level db so you will have to remove level db and then map with couch db because level db will allow only key value pair storage so because you know but it is very efficient i would say fast but you cannot do complex operation in level db that is why couch db is replacing the level db in appleger fabric when you replace the level db with couch db uh, you will be able to store a uh, no, you know database sorry data in a no sql format you can dump the data and you can read the data for you know later use like analytical use in later right so every peer for example in a in a network every org will have uh, peers right each peer will manage the database ledger so ledger will have the database mapped with for example it is not uh, mandatory that every peer should own the ledger but uh, peers which is uh, you know endorsing peers which are endorsing then he should, it should have a ledger in place because then only it can read the data and prepare the proposal and send back to the client, right? So there are multiple endorsement policies, there are multiple policies involved in the crypto configurable crypto file and crypto config transaction YAML file. So you, while you're doing configuration, you should be able to understand, okay, which peer will have the data, which peer will not have the data. At the end of the day, uh, if you are going to set up a traditional hyperledger fabric system, uh, you will end up having multiple copies of data. For example, each peer will have its own uh, data base uh, in respective uh, port number. Let's say uh, in in uh, Fabric, fabric, a default port number for accessing couch DB is five nine eight four, right? Similarly, for other peer six nine eight four, another peer seven eight four. You will have multiple 
you know, um, uh, couch DB data replica available. When one peer goes down, you should be able to, you know, still run the network with other peer which is available. Perfect. I'll move on uh, quickly. Yeah, miles to go. So this is a quick bites. Financial sector has spent a total of uh, 552 million on blockchain in 2018, right? Which includes uh, DeFi and many other applications in blockchain. So most of you, when we are developing your first, you know, uh, when I pleasure fabric uh, for the first time, you would end up using first network, right? That is the most easiest and uh, quickest way to spin up your container. Right. All you have to do is just uh, clone the fabric sample from the Git and then get into fabric sample first network and generate your, you know, just call the shell file to generate all the crypto configurable files. Once it is ready, then you can up the network and uh, you can see all the containers are up and running. If you want to, you know, bring down the network, just call this by F and let us search down. This is uh, initial steps which every programmer who wanted to start the Apple Fabric will do it, right? So this is a you know transaction log. When you see this, which means your transaction is up and running without any flaw. So generating crypto file is very important steps in Apple Fabric, which means as I said earlier, every actors in the network should have an identity, right? An ID generator, a valid generator. So, which means this crypto configurable file uh, will be generated for each actors in the network and using this uh, you know crypto files only they should be able to participate or communicate with each other to do that you will be mostly using crypto gen crypto gen binary this is the command you will call this crypto gen generate command followed by respective crypto config yaml file then you will be generating Genesis block to do uh, Genesis block will actually look for config transaction YAML file. So this YAML file will have a complete information about each uh, uh, you know, actors in the network. Uh, what is the identity or what is the crypto file for the respective actors? What is the capability of each actors? Who will do the investment policy? What is the investment policy between these two organizations? Uh, who is authorized to approve it and then what is the you know um, capability of the channel who are belongs to the channel everything it's kind of you know uh, a complete information about a network will be given in config transition.yaml file so when the time you know you generate the genesis block the genesis block should have all this information so that in the future if someone if if a new net new node has to be joined the network he will be i mean the node will be able to participate very easily by reading through all the information from the Genesis block. To do that, you'll have to call config transaction generator binary file. The command is here. Config transaction generator followed by profile. The sample, multi node, etc. will be in the you know, config transaction YAML file. You'll have to pass the channel ID and finally the Genesis block name. Okay, and then we have channel configuration. So again, the same config transaction generation will help you to create the anchor peer, right? And then of course the channel channel uh, file as well, because one uh, right after the channel creation, you will be spinning up the container. Then the container will be, uh, you know, helping you to join the channel. I mean, uh, make the peer, make the organization to join the channel. If you look at it here, this is where we are defining the anchor peer. Right, for each or so every or will have we should have its own anchor peer so that it can broadcast the message to other anchor peer in the network for which you have to use config transition gen you know again but here you'll have to mention the channel and then who is the anchor peer from argon msp anchor sphere and so on right so msp is very key, a key element here once you are done with this then you will be able to boost the network uh, by the bootstrapping, you would be mostly end up using Docker Compose file, which will have all the you know uh, endpoints and then port number, uh, how this is being binded to other port number and so on. Uh, what is the root volume? Everything will be displayed in Docker Compose YAML file. 
then you will be creating the channel using you know peer command peer binary file as i mentioned earlier peer will peer binary will help you to do all the stuff like creating channel and then joining the channel you have to join the channel uh, because basically you know using this uh, command uh, the respective organization will join the channel so that they can communicate in the channel then we have update anchor peer this is basically to you know propagate the definition of the channel to all the anchor peers saying that we have the channel created through this channel you will be able to communicate then we have a chain code flow chain code flow in the latest version we have a huge difference when compared to 1.4 in 1.4 you would have had only install and instantiate whereas in 2. Point version we have uh, packaging and then we have installing we have approving finally we have committing so we have four a life cycle has to be followed package install approve and commit right so to package the chain code we, uh, since i have been i'm i'm uh, more familiar with go i would go with the go uh, you know go stuff but of course for the uh, java node.js for java for other uh, smart contract language you will have different uh, uh, you know uh, packaging altogether so you will you will be using peer lifecycle chain code command uh, then you know you would have end up using the respective uh, naming convention tab that gc set up the path of the chain code and then specify the lang of the smart contract which is golang and label your you know a chain code similarly you have to install the chain code using the same peer lifecycle chain code command but this time only install and then approve approve has to be done by the respective uh, you know uh, organization but finally the committing can be done by super organization so when you do this entire life cycle uh, chain code life cycle then uh, your blockchain will be ready uh, to listen to the event to listen to the data you know return or read write or read finally you can invoke the chain code by calling peer chain code invoke command uh, followed by respective information Okay, so I'll quickly go to the demo code chain walkthrough because we are running out of time now. Okay, uh, so I will be you know open this repo to public mode right after this meeting. So this is my GitHub. Okay, so uh, we have two two stuff. One folder is blockchain network, another is API server. So blockchain network uh, will have uh, all the right, this. Maybe let me read through the readme first. This is supply chain blockchain project. Okay. So it has two repository, blockchain and IPA server. So blockchain network will have three organization, a raft order, uh, five orders, and chain code uh, we have written, a shell script to start the container, shell script to package and install, shell script to approve, shell script to commit, right? Uh, if you are downloading this repo, just follow the step. Uh, you have to just, you know, uh, uh, do the git clone, after which you can just uh, uh, change the, access control access level for this prerequisite side as i mentioned earlier this prerequisite side will help you to install all the thing all the you know necessary uh, programming or component for example nvm node.js and then mongodb whatever everything will be installed docker everything right once you do this then go back and call call this command which will help you to fetch all the fabric sample because you need the image of the fabric right so you have to download this, you have to call this command, which will download all the necessary images. Right after that, uh, you know, you have to install NVM 10.24.1 uh, to have a compatibility with the Fabric CA node SDK. So we have, uh, you know, uh, we have to just start the order, start the container. Once the order is executed running fine, then you will be able to call the R1 container, just call the shell container, then R2 container, then R3 container. Once all the ORP, peer one, peer two, couch DB, and then CAs are executing and running fine, then you have to call the chain code lifecycle, like package and install together for R1 and R2 and R3. Similarly, for R1, R2, R3, you have to call, approve the chain code, right? Finally, in R1 super R, you have to commit the chain code. Once, once you are go through this, once you are fine till this step, your blockchain will be up and running. And chain code would have been packaged, would have been installed, would have been approved, would have been committed. Now your blockchain is up and running. You should be able to call your API server by simply running npm start. Of course, you have to do npm install as well before npm start. Once you do that, you can see uh, the Swagger documentations available in localhost 8080 API docs.
right? If you want to clean up your containers, just call this command again and you can start again from scratch. Let me quickly help you to understand uh, what, what it what it does. So far, we have seen so much information, right? Difficult to digest, but still, I'll quickly touch upon. This is the file which we spoke initially, right? Config crypto config YAML file and crypto config transaction YAML file. If you look at it, uh, we have five order network order name and order dot supply chain dot com, okay? And the specs order one, order two, order three, order four, order etc. And it is the sans says that either it can be called by local host or 127.0.0.1 five orders and pair are you can see r1 uh, i want to set up two pairs simply r2 two pairs r3 two pairs right and we have respective name or domain name so the moment i have this file and generate using crypto gen the respective crypto files will be generated okay in the crypto config file you can go to order organization, you can see CA files, you can see MSP files, you can see order file and so on. So everything will have respective certificate authority files. Right? This is all about CryptoGen. Similarly, you can see for peer organization, it created a org1, r 3 CA, MSP, peer 3 ELC, etc. Right? And now you can go to, you can go and check orders. Order will have respective channel artifacts. It will have a Docker Compose order file. Start container. As soon as you hit start container, it will actually you know call this command Docker Compose followed by Docker Compose order YAML file. So what what it does? It just it take this file and invoke the respective container, right? So you will have to understand the Docker Compose as well how it works and what is the use of these ports, why it is exposing this port number, and what is the volume it is mapping with. You know what is the network uh, name for example supply chain is network name right so network name is important and uh, you have to see if you want to uh, be strong in that laser fabric i would recommend to go through each and every parameter what it does what is the use of it why they are using it why they are enabling this tls tls is nothing but uh, you know secure socket layer you know all you all know ssl right similarly it is nothing but https in app laser fabric we are enabling it Similarly, the root certificate we are providing everything, right? This is all about orders. If I go back to, you know, uh, let's go back to org1. In org1, again, you can go to Docker Compose org1 file where you can see uh, services such as uh, CA, CA for org1, similarly, peer0 for org1, and uh, CouchDB, uh, you know, CouchDB is a database for this uh, peers. So each peer will have a respective CouchDB respect to you know password uh we are current passes the credentials here and exposing the uh couch to be in respective ports right and we have cli as well when you want to uh, do everything manually in the terminal you can call this cli or, or container and do the respective execution right and if you, if you if you see the package installation chain code it again calls this uh, cli script from create common package install can go to create CLA script, which actually calls all this, you know, uh, from all this shell scripting. So shell scripting, I mean, the chain code, of course, you know, we have, we have a, a distributed chain code, logistics, manufacturer, motherboard, performance invoice, purchase order. We have so many chain codes. Let, let me uh, take you to only one chain code for the interest of time. Uh, Distributed.go will have all the crud operation like distributors, all the necessary field in structure, you know, uh, creating uh, cre uh, create API, uh, get code, and then update code, followed by you know delete code, and then history and so on. Right. Once you do all the stuff, you can go back to API server. And you can simply do npm install. After that, just run npm start. It will first invoke server.js. Server.js will call you know respective uh, routing. Parsman API, asset API, transaction and user management, followed by the swagger. The swagger will be taken from here, right? Swagger.json. This will have all the respective API you know, fields. And uh, you know, app folder will help you to enroll that mean it will invoke the respective chain code, it will help you to query the chain code, it will help you to register the user, respective organization. Whereas util folder, uh, <coughs> will help you to you know uh, build a ccp ccp is nothing but connection profile 
So as soon as your blockchain is up and running and ready, uh, you need to expose all the information about the blockchain to the REST API, right? That is why CCP comes into picture. So CCP can be configured like this, like network configured JSON, you can see it here. Like supply chain, uh, that is the network name, followed by list of orders available, <coughs> list of peers available, who is endorsing peer, uh, whether these peers can query the chain code, etc. can give all the information. The moment you provide all the information, then uh, the respective uh, fabric gateway will be able to read the data, will be able to communicate with the respective blockchain. Okay, that's how it works. Any questions before I move on? Okay, which language is good choice for API? Okay, when we use a fabric blockchain. So I would recommend Node.js, which is uh, easy to use and you can implement very shortly in short time frame. And second question, it does seem that hyperledger fabric has steep learning curve, example, Docker, YAML, scripting, etc. Can you suggest few points to start with? Okay, so I would say hyperledger fabric, yes, it does have steep learning curve, but uh, do not worry about reading Docker, YAML immediately. Uh, start with, uh, you know, a basic <coughs> uh, JavaScripting first. Because you can get rid of Golang, instead of Golang, you can start writing smart contract in JavaScript, right? You think Node.js, that's one thing. Uh, if you mostly, you know, uh, spend your time in reading uh, or writing smart contract in Node.js, you will be start, slow and steadily start writing API, right? When you touch these two things, for example, um, writing smart contract and then uh, fetching the data from smart contract and pushing it up to the smart contract, that is more than sufficient. Once you gain this confidence, then you can start getting into Docker Compose file. Docker Compose file, of course, reading it very simple. You can, uh, you know, uh, you can find plenty of resources available in the Google, but it's not that complex. I would say when you go through this, you know, respective uh, in, um, parameter, for example, in blockchain network, if you go to, uh, let's say this Docker Compose file, uh, at the initial stage, it might sound complex, but trust me, it is very simple. It's pretty straightforward. Just copy this and you know search for it, and it would, they will give you plenty of information about this parameter. Right? Then you will be able to understand. Or I would recommend try removing it and start running your network. I am sure you will face plenty of error. So I, I always prefer to share, you know uh, store store the information by Google. For example, uh, this is my. Uh, I used to document where we can start referring it like which, you know, um, not that one, sorry, your fabric. Yeah. And uh, you can also <clears throat> get the information from yeah, for example, for each errors, you will see some solutions I used to document. Like which, when you are uh, developing blockchain, you know, when you are developing knowledge, I would recommend you to start documentation. So documentation is key to your success. Keep learning it. And when you are practicing it, I am sure you will face plenty of error. Uh, you know, feel proud about it because without facing error, you will, you will never learn, right? After you face the error, start documenting it, provide the solution and start sharing the knowledge to others. When you start doing it, people will ask you plenty of questions to answer it rightly. You'll have to again read through it. So which will actually enhance your knowledge, right? That is how you can gain more information in blockchain. So we also have blockchain theme lab, which is a, a not for profit. Uh, we have so many articles being shared by our community. You can also start contributing. There are plenty. You know, you can keep reading it. There are something called Learn Web3. Uh, I find this one is very interesting. If you want to be a, a public blockchain developer, I would recommend this learnweb3.io. It has four track freshman tracks, sophomore track, junior track, senior track. So start this, start one freshman track, uh, then go to two, three, four. By this time, you would be a you know strong developer in public blockchain. Right. And we have something called uh, uh, DAP University, uh, very good YouTube channel. Uh, we have Eat the Blogs. We have many, many, you know, blockchain uh, uh, gurus, you know, who, start, who started developing 
uh, who started putting together good information, good uh, resources for the Web3 community. Okay. Uh, so the other question is, can you also show transaction format in Hyperledger? Okay. So let me, let me help you understand that. Another question, my name is, okay. Okay. So uh, Bing, I would recommend you to uh, read this Learn Web 3, uh, which will be definitely helpful for you as a beginner. Okay. In Q and A, no questions. Any other questions about from the last one? Okay, so let me tag the two there. Okay, so please give the links to others learning sites registered. So let me type it here, learnweb3.io. You can try eat the blocks. You can try DAP University. Try, try, you no, know, try to uh, get mostly the free resources first because you need to gain the confidence before you invest your money. I would recommend to read the available resources first before you start paying for the premium courses. And then we have, uh, um free uh, you can also follow one more let me show you that that university learn of three eat the blocks that university and um okay it's not it's, it's not coming to my mind we are shared with the the host after this call uh you know uh, she will be able to share with all the team all the members I think that brings us to the um, end of the program. Thank you so much, Lokeshwaran, for that very insightful session, uh, right from um, explaining how the ledger came to be. So um, thank you, uh, Lokeshwaran, and also thank you all of you who stayed and uh, participated in this session. Um, uh, resources relating to blockchain would be available in our uh, Slack channel. We have a resources channel um, and the link has already been shared on uh, the chat. The recording will also be available on YouTube. So once again, thank you all. Uh, do join us uh, and follow us on social media. And thank you, Lokesh Sharan. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening to me so patiently. And uh, listening one and a half hours is not, uh, not that easy. Thank you once again. Thank you.